Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Rosario and I like to read and talk about books on here. So today I'm going to be talking all about the books that I'm reading for the Women's Prize Fiction long list. So this year I'm trying to read all of the long list. Last year I tried and I read all of the short list but not all of the long list. This year there's no demon copperheads so I'm thinking um, maybe I could do it. I'm also not as busy in terms of the last time I was studying part-time and working full-time so I do have a little bit more free time that I can spend on doing these things. I just want to introduce the video and document my whole journey of reading all these books and what I think of them. There's a lot that I've never really heard of. Lots of these I think most people have not heard of or like they were very just like fresh debuts from people which I think is like exciting. It's, I get why people are a bit disappointed with the list sometimes but I always enjoy being introduced to new authors and I think it's nice when like an award can kind of lift up new authors from like the most recent like last couple of years it feels like the prize very much does like to focus on new authors and debuts and kind of lift up different people and have like different kind of themes running through the long list. So I think that's exciting. I'm excited about that and I'm excited to read these. I've already read Soldier Sailor. I can appreciate the sentiment and I can appreciate what the novel is trying to do and the kind of topics that it is touching on. So we sort of essentially follow a main character who is called Soldier and dealing with her in the early days of motherhood and essentially dealing with postpartum depression you kind of get these juxtapositions of like extreme emotions of like unconditional love juxtapose with kind of this feeling of, of a loss of identity and feeling lost and confusion and resentment and all of the dif these different kind of conflicting emotions and I can appreciate what the novel does in showing that and it does a quite a jo good job I think of that kind of of depicting something that I think isn't always spoken about but I think it's written in very much like a stream of consciousness style which I think sometimes can feel a bit felt a bit repetitive in the kind of things that are going on so we just follow Soldier as she's going through motherhood her days with her child what she's thinking think she's thinking about her husband think she's thinking about her friend who she meets at the park uh, her like loss of like identity her independence all these different things you just kind of get a stream of consciousness and it sometimes it does just feel a bit repetitive and it feels a bit jarring and part of me thinks you're supposed to feel a little bit like that you're supposed to feel this kind of like sense of just one thing after another day after day after day of just like this kind of like feeling of feeling a bit lost and it just feels a bit jarring sometimes and I also think that I personally don't like the subject matter I decreased my enjoyment of the novel even though I can see what the novel is doing and what the novel is trying to do I put this through like a corpile method so it rates like the character it stands for different things so it's like character atmosphere etc 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 I think this came out a 3.5 for me um, I rounded it down to a 3 so yeah a 3 from me I think I finished Ordinary Human Failing a couple of days ago and I really loved this one. I gave it four out of five stars. So it follows this family who have the youngest member who's been accused of murdering another child. And she's from this family who are living in South London in the 90s and they've come across from Ireland. And you'd expect from the blurb that this kind of follows like crime and what's happened and has she done it? Like it almost seems like it's gonna be a bit of a thrillery. Did she do this? What, what's happened here but it's really like um this whole situation is used as kind of this lens to look at the family and the family dynamics we follow the perspectives of all these different characters in the family and we kind of look at their lives and all the different things that have got them to the point that they're at and we also follow this news reporter who's kind of getting this first scoop of the situation and he's very ruthless and insidious ins insidious and it kind of gives that kind of um that really predatory look of uh, what the newspapers are like when something like this happens to like a family it's like a tragic situation and like this news reporter is like trying to swoop in and get this first scoop and the thing that i really enjoyed about this is kind of that look at the like ordinary human failings that happen within this family and that just 
generally I think it can happen so it kind of looks at like generational trauma and how that is passed down and the different failings and how that then affects all these different characters to the points where they're at and the kind of family dynamics as they are and there's also like touching upon like and family dynamics seems to really be something and like family relationships really seem to be a theme that comes up quite often in these books in these books in this long list uh, we also look at loneliness we look at motherhood from quite a complex kind of stance i think we look at like this sensationless kind of like look at crime and um things uh, the situations that families are in and we look at family dynamics and communication within families and how that does impact on people um especially the lack of communication but i really enjoyed this it was so intriguing to read because while you want to know what happened like how did this murder occur that's kind of the kind of lens to look at all these different family dynamics and just explore these different relationships and I found it so intriguing to read it was I really enjoyed the characterization and all the characters and how the plot moved and it was just really enjoyable to read I really loved this so I think I'll probably check out more of Megan Dolan's book because I know she has some coming from um coming from i know she has another one acts of desperation i think that um sounds quite good also okay so i finished the maiden and i also really loved this i gave it four stars because it just it had such a compulsion such a compellingness to read it i just didn't want to put it down I kept wanting to pick it up which is always a good sign we're following this kind of retelling or reimagining of a real historical event which is the execution of Christian Nimmo who is accused of murdering her uncle and lover her lover that's also her uncle he's not actually related to her he's her uncle through marriage not through blood which kind of you know makes it a little bit less weird <laughs> so we follow her and we follow her in the kind of lead up to her execution we find out at the beginning she's being executed for this crime and then we follow um the period before that and see all the things that have led up to this period and we also follow another character which in the author's note sa it says she isn't a real life figure like she isn't a real person that she's found any record of she is purely imagined for the purposes of the story so we also follow her and she is kind of a prostitute who has been bought paid for by the lord aka Christian's uncle to kind of live in the house as a like live-in prostitute which is um, kind of strange but I mean I'm sure it happened so we get these two perspectives following Christian and we follow Violet and you get both these perspectives of all the events that lead up to Christian's execution which is really interesting because it kind of becomes kind of as like love triangle slash jealousy kind of triangle which is actually really fun to read about I feel like I'm not much of a love triangle person but this was really interesting because of there was so much at play and all these different dynamics and you kind of see these two perspectives from these two women who are in very different positions in society and you see how these events affect them there you kind of get their motivations and what's going on and i really enjoyed this i couldn't put it down i flew through it and it was a really good enjoyable read um it felt like it was very much like a modern take on this event because of different people kind of come out in different circumstances i think it was really easy to read there's lots of things that are kind of explained and you kind of get to like the scene is set very well so you, even if you don't know anything about the 1700s in scotland like it felt you really feel like you're there i felt lolly sided i don't really know anything about it and i felt like i could really it, the scene was very easily set like you can just jump into it parts of this remind Reminded me of a little bit of like the marriage portrait by Maggie Farrell but I don't know if that's just because they are both historical fictions and have both been on the kind of um long list for this prize so I mean maybe that's just me not having much historical fiction knowledge but so yes 4.5 for the maiden I finished Western Lane as well now. This was such a strange one. So this is a kind of coming of age story 
from the point of view of an 11 year old Gopi. It's following her after the death of her mother but it's kind of like, I'm not sure how long after, it's kind of like um, not the like immediate aftermath but the kind of life after that and we kind of see her dealing with grief and also her family dealing with grief. So it's like a bit of a coming of age story along with like this look at grief and there's also lots of squash in terms of the game squash, uh, the game squash, the sports squash. Um, there's a lot of squash. <laughs> Overall, I ended up really liking this. However, I did find lots of the squash just a, a bit boring. Like my, I felt my eyes glaze over when lots of squash was happening or the kind of like names were coming up. Like I'm not a massive sport person and I don't mind it in books sometimes, but like there was so much squash. There was so much squash and not gonna lie, I felt like I found the, the squash bit a little bit boring to read, not gonna lie. But I did like the exploration of grief and you see Gopi and her whole family and the kind of like extended family as well and how they're grieving and how that comes across in their different behaviours and the dynamics between the family. So we follow her and her two sisters and her dad. We kind of follow them as they are grieving and also the whole story kind of centres around squash, them practising squash. I think because of in the beginning, um, one of the aunties says, oh, you should get them to play squash to keep their minds occupied kind of thing. That's good for people. And you kind of see how they use squash as this kind of distraction almost. It feels like they kind of use squash and get so in roast in this game of squash and every week training and training and training um, as a way of kind of distracting themselves from their grief. We kind of see a lot about how their father is dealing with his grief for his wife but also kind of like um, him trying to deal with being a single parent to three girls and you see it's such a subtle look at grief in the way that the novel kind of looks at his different little behaviours and it's all from the point of view of this 11 year old Gopi, very like simply narrated but in a very subtle and clever way where she is just kind of relaying what he's like his behavior and what he's done and he's he's just we watched tv and did this and blah, blah blah the way that he's behaving and how it's changed and all these little things that really show that how he's grieving and how he's finding things so difficult to be a parent to all these three children so it's such a subtle kind of look at grief and at these characters it wasn't until like the 60 percent maybe mark that i was like a little bit more engrossed in the characters um, because there was a lot of squash and I think it feels very plotless at the start it does feel like a bit like all over the place because you're just following her going to squash and then little things that are happening but I think you kind of see towards the end what's happening in the end I really came to love this it was just it was so subtle throughout and then by the end I was like oh okay I can I can kind of see what was happening this whole time even though it felt a little bit plotless and we were just kind of following her on her day-to-day -day life it was felt very just coming of age but nothing really majorly ha major happening we, so yeah we had such a subtle look at like grief and family dynamics and kind of sisterhood um the game of squash um and also just like a passion for sport i guess yeah other than too much squash talk i really enjoyed it by the end i felt so moved i felt so attached to this character um and just everything that she was going for i just felt so connected to them by the end and i didn't i don't think i realized until i was coming up to the end that i was like oh no i, I do actually really like i really enjoy these characters and i really enjoy just this little snapshot of this family and the things they're going through so yeah i thought it was really well done in the end yeah very subtle but i was moved by the end of it so i gave it four stars I've finished A Trace of Sun now. I really enjoyed this, surprisingly so. So when you look at the cover, it kind of like, I don't think the, co the cover just doesn't really convey much. It's kind of like just a bit, feels a bit rushed. Like I feel like from the cover, you kind of get like these like an immigration story of people moving from one country to another. And in a way, yes it is, but most of the novel is about the repercussions of that move and everything that comes with it from the decision to move. And like, you'd think that maybe it's just like, you know, it's seems quite light-hearted just like the kind of the cover it just seems like you know it doesn't seem like it's so heavy it seems like it could be a holiday book but it's not it's so there's so many heavy topics that are dealt with in this so we follow two perspectives we follow Scylla and we follow Rafe her son and we follow them through this period of time starting with when they make the decision for Scylla to follow her husband and move from Grenada to the UK 
with her husband to kind of find a better life. They can't afford to take Rafe with them, who is at like five or so, five or seven, something. Like he's quite young when they go. And so she goes and leaves him in Grenada with her sister while she goes to the UK. And we follow basically the, ram the ramifications and the repercussions and all of the kind of impact that that has. So like we look at the family relationships and how her kind of abandonment of her child for seven years, I think it is, it was seven years, um, affects their relationships. So then we skip forward seven years when he does get to be, he does go to the UK and the relationship is completely different. And then we can't, that's how we look at these kind of like family dynamics. And also that theme that keeps coming up, generational trauma and like parent and child relationships that all keeps coming up in these books, apparently. There's clearly a theme coming up. We have that initial bit of immigration of moving from Grenada to the UK and then we kind of follow their life in the UK and the all of the family so there's also we also look at Lucy his sister and there's a lot of like jealousy and resentment for Lucy as she was born in the UK and she had this kind of relationship with his mum that he doesn't he didn't get to have because they were they were apart for seven years and it was so like well and emotionally done I feel like like the feelings of like abandonment and um like loneliness and isolation and um all these different things and then we also see it from Scylla, his mother's point of view, and kind of the way that she kind of justifies it and how she's doing it for that kind of greater good and to give them all a better life. But yeah, I really loved the exploration of that those kind of family dynamics and how um, I think a lot of the characters also, like a lot of it really focuses on how this decision and the house decision has impacted on all of their lives. As the story goes on, we deal with other heavier topics like mental health and kind of like the weight of choices. As more serious things happen, I think there's this real discussion of how a parent's choice does affect their children, having to deal with that and come to terms with that. But yeah, this was very much heavier than I thought it was going to be. It was very emotional, heartbreaking, and I did shed a tear at the end. It was very emotional. I really enjoyed it. I gave it five stars. And I feel like the writing is very, very accessible. Like it's not the most flourishy, flowery writing. But I really loved the themes and the character dynamic, the family dynamics and that look at generational trauma and all of those things of how decisions affect people's lives. I found that really, really moving. I really enjoyed it. I think I'm going to split my reading the women's prize up into different sections because I feel like this is good. This video, a video of every single book is going to go on for way too long. So I'm going to end this part here as like part one of three I guess because I think I've read five books now so I'm gonna finish it here and I will make another video with all of my next reads I've kind of got them all planned out already so I kind of know what's going on thank you so much for watching if you've got this far um let me know if you've read any of these let me know what you thought of them um I'd love to hear what everyone else thinks of them let me know what your favorite so far if you're reading the long list what your favorite is so far if you like this video and want to see more from me please hit the like button you can hit the subscribe button and you will get my next video for the women's prize in your subscription feed so yes thank you so much for watching bye